Hello, and welcome to the Oasis Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Rachel Schaefer, and I am excited to have Jen Tringale here with us today. She is also a co-host to this podcast. And we are right on the heels of the Healing Summit yeah. and so excited about all that God is doing and excited to talk about it with you. Yeah, I really am too. I have been amazed, um, and I think you probably know way more than I do, but just the testimonies that have come in mm-hmm. um, from people in the room, the thousands that were watching online. I mean, it was just an amazing night. Yeah, it really was. And the way you handled all the testimonies that came your way and you were able to share in real time as they were happening, it yeah. just ignited faith in the room and kept everybody engaged yeah. and praying and worshiping. Um, yeah, it's just been amazing to hear the testimonies. Wild, wild. Tell, Would you tell the one, because um, you were just telling me, and I don't remember all the details, mm-hmm. about um, the woman that they said, like, Christmas is it for you. Yes, yes. Would you tell that one? She's been a longtime member of our church and was recently diagnosed um, with, or recently, like in the last two years, had melanoma, but it spread. Mm. And so then she was given this diagnosis of stage four cancer. And they basically told her, you have a 50-50 chance of making it until Christmas. Oh, my word. She has two kids. She's yeah. married. Oh. Um, just so much to live for. Yeah. And um, so we've been praying for her here at church, but then she was also able to come to the Healing Summit. Okay. And that next week after the summit, she went to the doctor, had an MRI done. Ten of the 12 tumors that she had are gone. And two that are left are small. Like they anticipate them just disappearing as well. Like it's truly a miracle and just all the glory to God. Like she shared her testimony, and I believe you can find it on our website or on our webpage um, to hear that. But that's just amazing. And that's just one of many that we've been hearing. And you know, so many I know are still coming in, but Mm -hmm. I mean, 10 tumors, that is a notable miracle. Right. When somebody is told, like, this is your last Christmas, Mm -hmm. and they are gone, that is just, (laughs) that is amazing. It is amazing. I don't think there was a dry eye in the place. We were just all so excited and happy for her, just thrilled for her. Yeah. So It was um, awesome to see, too, everybody that was watching online, the testimonies that were coming in on real time. I was thinking about this the other day Uh because I was kind of checking them over on the side. And there was one point where it just seemed like all of a sudden Mm -hmm. there was a lot of people commenting that were watching online going, it's like a heat wave just came through our house or our Uh group. or It was like this wave of healing. And I thought that's so interesting. I mean, when you're partnering with the God of the universe – in healing mm-hmm. and all the ways he's moving in that, so many things are happening. Yeah, you know, at one time. Right. Um, what an amazing night. It yeah, it really was incredible. and so incredible to think that literally people were joining from all over the world. Yeah, all at one time, and Holy Spirit was moving in every place yeah. in unique, incredible ways. It yeah. really was an amazing night. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> I was thinking, and Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about this, because you were up there leading worship for this event. How many hours did you sing, first of all? I mean, I think it was close to three hours. I think (laughs) we were all like, Rachel's going to go on like a silent strike after this just to let her voice. (laughs) That that is a feat of strength. So incredible. You and the team did an amazing job. They did. Um, But what... From your perspective, like just approaching um, as a worship leader, Mm -hmm. leading worship through an event like that, and then actually doing it as hands are being laid on the sick and all this is happening, like what was that like for you? What headspace were you in as all that was going on? Yeah. Well, first of all, 
like leading up to the summit, um, back in May, we had an event with Hank Kuhneman. And he gave a prophetic word that um, over the Oasis and over Apostle Tim about healings and miracles and about really contending for them. And so that led our church and then those who join us online into a seven-day fast where we prayed for healing and for miracles. Mm -hmm. And then that kind of spurred that idea for the healing summit, and that began to take shape. Also part of that word um, that Hank Kuhneman gave, it included worship. And it said that through your worship, he was speaking to me but yeah. and the team, saying through your worship, healings are going to take place. Wow. Well, I kind of took that to mean, like, I need to write this amazing song about healing then if this is going right, to happen. Right. So I spent every spare moment that I had, like writing down ideas for uh, a healing song, writing down melody ideas, uh, you know, what words rhyme with miracle and rhyme with break, you know, like all these things. So, and then, but the song was just not coming for me. And sometimes songs are hard and you have to work for them, but this one was just, it seemed a little extra. So one day in prayer, I just asked the Lord, like, why is this song so difficult? Like, why am I having such a hard time writing this song? Yeah. And very simply, he said, I never asked you to write a song about healing. I told you to worship. And I was like, kind of taken aback. And I went back and I read the word and I was like, well, you're right. You never said, you never told me to write a song about healing. What the word says, and I want to read it so I get it exactly right. But what he said in the word was, worship, and as you do, the sound of your voice will release healings and breakthrough at a whole nother level than you've ever seen before. Wow. That's what the word said. Yeah. And so it totally changed my focus leading up to the summit. I mm. started writing out healing scriptures and taking those over to my piano, and I just sang healing scriptures. I wasn't trying to write a song. Yeah. It wasn't, that wasn't the focus. The focus was worship. And I talked with our worship team about it. I kind of told them, you know, what the story behind the song and all of that and said, our intent that night is just to keep the praise going, just to keep the worship going, to flow with Holy Spirit. Like that's our focus. Yeah. And, um, it turned out, like, as you said, we ended up worshiping for hours, but everybody just I feel like seemed energized from the moment it started to the moment it ended. And that is only by the grace of God because it was a long time to be up there playing and singing. Um, But the atmosphere just got thicker and thicker the longer we worshiped. I mean, really, how could it not when you're doing that? And the focus really became, it wasn't about the song we were singing. It was about the one that we were glorifying and exalting and magnifying. And that's why the atmosphere was just ripe, really, for miracles. And we were able to keep it going that way. So, you know, from my perspective, it was just an awesome night of worship. Yeah. And a glorious outcome of that where there were also healings and miracles and breakthroughs. And yeah, um, yeah it was amazing to be a part of. That is so. incredible. And I'm just hearing you share that because we haven't talked about this right. prior to us talking about it now. And there it was like as we were even worshiping. There were, it was like there was waves mm-hmm. of just the presence of God yeah. that would come in. But walking that out with him for not what your version of what you thought he wanted, but what he wanted. Right. And then the power of that mm-hmm. is so amazing. Yeah. I think there's something really beautiful that in this place that we're in, you know, that Apostle Tim and others are talking about, but especially this new place of this release of healing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. In what you're saying, it's reminding me of what I have felt, that it's like God is going, yes, I'm releasing healing in a new way. I'm releasing it now. I'm bringing back the things I've done in the past, but in a new way. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to walk with me in it. Right. Like it is very much a, oh, yeah, it's it's not. I remember how they did this, you know, 50 years ago. It's like, how do you want to do this now? And even in yeah. worship, you were walking that out. Right. It's a, so profound. I love that so much. Yeah. Um, I, I believe that God is teaching his body again how he works. You know, when Moses talked about, like, show me your ways. Mm-hmm. And that's what you were doing. Right. You know, like 
not my way that I figured out, but show me, show me your ways. Mm -hmm. And especially with healing, that's important, isn't it? Because healing comes in a lot of different ways. Right. You know, I mean, that night, obviously, there was actually a few ways. There were words of knowledge, Mm -hmm. you know, that came um, from a lot of the ministers that were there. Right. Um, And then I think Apostle Tim got up and kind of gave that decree of healing mm-hmm. before they even opened it up for the ministry line. And then, of course, laid hands on people for three hours. Right. <laughs> I mean, that was a feed in of itself. But healing comes a lot of ways. I was thinking about that verse, Rachel, in mm-hmm. Luke chapter 17 um, in verse 14, and it says, when he, Jesus, saw them, so he was talking about this group of lepers that had um, were near him and they had come for healing. And Jesus said when he, it says, when Jesus saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were healed. And yeah. so it's, it's sort of a picture of sometimes healing is an event, but sometimes it's it's a process it's it's a happening mm-hmm. that's that's happening and um and of course Jesus was telling these guys you know to go show themselves to the priests because at that time as lepers they had to be removed from society oh. you know they had yeah. to live outside of the city because of cleanliness and and they were dealing with open sores and so to contain that so the only way they could re-enter was they had to go show themselves to the priest, and the priest had to say, okay, yes, you are healed. You do not have leprosy, so you can go back to your family. You can go back to your career. You can go back to to joining life as you know it. And you think about the faith that that took to Jesus is like, go show yourself to the priest, but they still have leprosy at this point. Yeah. And so to go find the priest, they got to go walk into that town. Mm -hmm. But it says as they were, they went, they were healed. So I was thinking about Rachel, and I know we've all had this at some point in our life, that there's times when maybe you do have hands laid on you or you receive the decree of faith, Mm -hmm. but it is the progression of the healing and it's not so much the event. We've all had to receive healing like that at some point in our life. Right. Uh, have you experienced that? Yeah. Um, I've experienced it actually a lot, I feel like, in my life. But yeah. the, the main um, thing I'm thinking of today is our son, Jaden. Mm. And he's our youngest son. And He's such a doll. He's, yeah. He, he is. is so he's, sweet. He's sweet and he's funny. He's got an awesome sense of humor. Yeah. And um, when he was six, he was going in. So he was born with a cleft lip and palate. Yeah. And when he was six years old, he was going to have a surgery related to his palate. And during surgery, no one knew it, but he had a stroke. And so when when he should have been waking up like from anesthesia and all of that, yeah. he really wasn't. He never fully came awake. He stayed in like a semi-comatose state, really. And nobody could understand why. There was literally no reason had the surgery gone smoothly. And how old was so he at this point? He was six years old. Six years old. Yeah, okay. he was um, actually in kindergarten still. So. so nobody knew what was happening. Yeah. And obviously... You know, my family came and everybody came and, you know, we were praying over him and just, you know, crying out to God, like, you know, heal him. And we actually at one point had a doctor come to us and say, you know, your son is losing the fight and we need him to win it. And I think it was at that moment that I thought, okay, I need to get myself away into the presence of God because I don't know how else to walk this out. Yeah. And um, it was when I did that that... um, Holy Spirit prompted me to look up Psalm 31. The whole chapter is excellent, but Mm -hmm. the highlight of the chapter was the end where it said, you are brave, you are strong, don't give up, expect God to get here soon. And I, that, it just became like a rhema word to me. It was like speaking straight to me. And already the chapter had been talking about God breathing 
life for you and breathing day in and day out. And that was one of our prayers for Jane because he wasn't breathing on his own. Wow. And um, so anyway, we began decreeing that scripture. I actually wrote a song and I recorded it just very quickly into my phone um, because at the time I was going back and forth because we had three other kids at home. Yeah. So my husband and I were switching back and forth going to the hospital So I was at the piano at home, sung it, recorded it on my phone, sent it to my husband. I said, I want you to start playing this over Jade and just hold it up to his ear. We assumed he could hear us, but he wasn't fully awake. Wow. Um, But all the studies say people can hear. Yeah. So I said, just, you know, hold it up to his ear, play it. So we did that day in and day out, and we just kept decreeing. And I would give, you know, Facebook status updates, and I would always, like, hashtag expect God. You know, that's what we were all doing. Yeah. And just believing for his healing. But to your um, point about asking, you know, it wasn't a sudden healing. Mm. God didn't give me that scripture, and I went and declared it, and Jaden woke up and was healed. Yeah. That is not what happened. Yeah. Um, We were in the hospital for 30 days where we were trying to figure out what was going on. And um, they were teaching us basically new ways to care for him because um, he could no longer swallow. He could no longer walk. His whole left side was affected. So after 30 days, we were able to go home, but we went home with a wheelchair, feeding tube, um, suction machines. Just I can't even describe to you everything that we went home with. Like a mini hospital. Basically, yes, yes. And um, so anyway, we went home, and we just kept praying. We just kept contending. I wow. kept playing that song for him. I have a video of him. He still had the feeding tube, and but he was able to walk a little bit better at that point. And he's standing behind me at the piano, and we're singing his song. Like, oh. we just kept doing it. And after three months of being home, yeah, wheelchair was gone. Come on. He was walking. He was swallowing. He was eating. Like, everything began to be restored. But it was a process. Wow. Um, But, you know, it's your child. You're not going to give up on your child. But she shouldn't give up ever. If you have a word from God, then keep standing, keep believing, no matter what it looks like. Because it would have been easy for us to just say, I guess this is our new normal now. Yeah. You know, but we weren't willing to settle for that because we had a word from God. So good. So, um, so yeah, I'm a big believer in pray and keep on praying, contend, keep contending and standing for what you know is your right as a child of God. Absolutely. And I would would suspect that in that process, Mm -hmm. there were even days where maybe, you know, it looked like things were moving forward. And then the next day, maybe it looked like it was farther back than before. So that doesn't get to dictate what you are believing is happening. Exactly. In that case, in the little body of yeah, Jaden. exactly. And so healing come. I mean, even that testimony of that uh, precious woman mm-hmm. with those tumors, I thought that was so interesting. Ten of those tumors gone, and then out of the 12, and then two, right. the doctor had said, it looks like they're disintegrating. Mm-hmm. And so it was like almost simultaneously, there's an event of healing, and right. then there's also a progression. That's true. But I love that, Rachel, and yeah. I know that that is stirring people's hearts that grabbed on. Maybe they're watching, and they were part of the summit, and mm-hmm. that command of faith was given. Or hands were laid on them, and they are standing and believing. And right. I think this is such a powerful reminder that you're not crazy, And you didn't miss the boat. Right. You know, the healing power of God went into your body. Mm -hmm. But what we do with that command of faith or receiving that healing power after that is up to us. That's so true. God works with our faith in that. So um, I don't know. I'd like to just pray. Let's you and I just pray for people that are watching that are in that process of healing. Okay. And just speak yeah. to that place, you know, that mm-hmm. they're in. Okay. Father, we just thank you that you are the God who heals. Yes. Jesus, you are the healer. And right now we lift up those that are watching this that maybe they already received 
that decree of faith that by your stripes, Jesus, we were healed. Maybe hands were already laid on them and they are standing in the place of faith for the symptoms to be gone, for restoration to come. We stand with every individual in that place right now and we just speak strength to you. We say be made strong in spirit. We say be strong in faith. Believe that those things that you have received are coming to pass. And we just add our faith with yours right now. And we say it shall be in the name of Jesus that you are healed and whole from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, that every deteriorating condition, every symptom, every effect of sickness and disease is leaving. It is going now in Jesus' name. And we speak the healing power of God to every part of your body in the name of Jesus. Father, we speak to those that are in the need of divine healing right now. Maybe they weren't a part of the summit or haven't been in a place to receive prayer. And so for those that have sickness or disease in their body right now, we just say, be healed in Jesus' name. We speak the healing power of God to you, that all sickness and disease is eradicated from your body because by the stripes of Jesus, he received your healing. And so it's yours now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Father, we just give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for all that you are doing in this incredible day that we are living in. We thank you for the healing that's happening all over the world right now, and we give you all the glory for it. In your precious name we pray, Jesus. Amen. 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 I really believe that people are that are watching this that their healing's being received, mm-hmm. you know, right now. I yes. really believe that, just grabbing on, going, that was my moment. That's what I was waiting for. I'm in agreement with that. Yes. You know, it's happening. And then also that progression of healing. I mean, really, what started at the healing summit, mm-hmm. it's still unfolding. Oh, definitely. You know, it's still happening. It's like picking up those waves after wave after wave. And um, what an awesome thing to be in the middle of. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that. Yeah. We're going to just hear more and more testimonies. Yes. And I'm excited for all that God is doing. I am too. I am too. Well, this has been so good. Um, Thank you all for joining us today. And remember, the greatest days in church history are not in our past. They're in our present and in our future. Remember, you can share the Oasis podcast with your friends and family. Thanks for watching.